all mm -hmm. five. Is yep. this a good or bad move by the league, though, to be honest about these blown calls? Stephen A., I think it's a very good thing. I have come to appreciate it, and it's been going on for a while. In fact, for, for the, uh, it's been, seems like, five years now. They have posted online breakdowns of fourth quarter officiating of games so that the beat writers who cover the teams can actually go through point by point and see what was called, what should have been called, what was called correctly. I like that transparency. I like that honesty. I was watching Inside the NBA last night late on TNT. They had Joe Borg so on, the uh, supervisor of officials, a longtime NBA ref himself. And he was excellent talking about this transparency. And, and he said that they're very comfortable coming clean on all these plays, pro or con, because in general, the NBA refereeing is at a high level. They are consistently good, which makes the NBA comfortable with showing you when they're wrong. I agree with that. I think in general, and, and we critique from day to day to day on this show, I think NBA refereeing, as opposed to college refereeing, is at a supremely high and consistent level. We don't have that many plays during the year where we say, they flat out blew that one. It happens. There's human element. It's a very difficult and fast and faster and faster game to referee. But let's take it quickly, blow by blow, of what should and shouldn't have been called here. The Patty Mills little grab around the waist of Steven Adams, there's no way I'm calling that. That happens all the time in those scrums leading to an inbounds late pass. Not calling that one. Joe Borgia said that absolutely Ginobili should have been called for stepping on the line. That's called technically delay of game, and it's a technical foul shot. So, again, play would have immediately stopped. Thunder would have gotten to shoot a free throw. I assume Durant would have shot it. I assume he would have made it. It would have been a three-point game. Thunder's ball inbounds with 13.5 seconds left. That would have changed the dynamic. I, I wouldn't call that. I see it happen occasionally, but he said by the letter of the law, he believed that should have been called. Obviously, we all agree that the next play should have been called waiters leaning across, you know, breaking the plane, so to speak, to elbow Ginobili in the, in the chest. Now we got almost simultaneously Kawhi Leonard grabs Westbrook's jersey as he's breaking into the backcourt to get open. It's pretty blatant. I, I got to tell you, even as a Spurs supporter, if I'd seen that, I would have called it. That would have changed the dynamic of the game. Now we get to the end. Final play. My man Patty shoots. It was an air ball. I still think Stephen Adams got his fingertips on it. But Stephen A., how many scrums have you seen under a basket at the end of a, of a playoff game? This is a big deal. It's a free-for-all. Basically, NBA referees at this point just stand back and say, you guys decide it. We'll just watch. You, you guys figure this one out yourself. Just about anything goes. You, you can't mug somebody. You can't, break, you can't draw blood. It was hard for me to see on the replays we had on ESPN that, that actually Ibaka grabbed LaMarcus Aldridge jersey as he tried to come up to shoot. TNT had a little better down the baseline shot. He did grab his jersey. Am I calling that with a second and a half left? I'm not. I'm just not. I'm sorry, Spurs fans. I'm not calling that. I couldn't see it clearly enough. It, it's a free-for-all, and I'm going to let the players play at that point. It's not significant enough that I'm going to decide the game with a two-shot foul, LaMarcus being able to, to win the game. So in the end, I, I, I appreciate the transparency, but I, I, I think they did pretty well, and, and I don't think that should have been called in the end, so I don't think it would have flipped the, the outcome of the game. Well, Skip Bayless, there's a couple of things. Number one, I appreciate your position. Let me just say that because um, I thought differently a week ago, uh, a little more than a week ago when James Harden pushed off Iguodala um, and, and, and hit that game-winning shot. I believe it was game three, if I remember correctly, game three or four. Please uh, forgive me if I don't remember which game it was, but when James Harden pushed off on Iguodala, I was like, you know, so what? They're admitting that it should have been a called an offensive foul. What good does it do now? And then what I did was when I knew we were going to discuss this topic, I reached out this morning to the NBA. Uh, Commissioner Adam Silver and I connected this morning uh, along with some other N NBA officials that I spoke to on the phone as well. And they make a very, very good point. Number one, if you're Adam Silver, you're talking about how 
good officials appreciate the fact uh, that, that that disclosure and transparency are a part of the process because it highlights the good calls that they make as well. Then when you think about it and you take it a step further, one of the things that Adam Silver said to me, he said it gives the public more confidence um, in the integrity of, the, of our game when we're open and honest about our mistakes. That's one of the positions that he's taken because one of the things that Adam Silver, once coming into office, wanted to make sure of was additional, uh, you know, elevated level of transparency. They've got something called an L2M process, Skip. It's the last two-minute process where, you know, they put out these reports. Yep. Because obviously even though the officials and their actions and how they call a game are monitored throughout the game, you can't get those reports out every day. So it's very arduous and cumbersome to say the least, and they can't do all of that. But the last two minutes is something that they can put out. And I think you could go online somewhere and actually see yep. some of the reports that are put yeah. out with the with the last two-minute process, okay? So they're saying, well, the reason why we do that is that we want to highlight the good and the bad. We want to make sure it's out there. We want to make sure that we have absolutely nothing to hide. I even asked a question, how much does this have to do with the Tim Donaghy scandal, the betting scandal from 2007? And they said pretty much close to nothing because if you recall, that was back in 2007. This was implemented last March. And so when you take into account the fact that it's approximately 14 months old, and then you see that this is about Adam Silver and what he wants to do um, in terms of elevating the level of transparency. And that's really what it comes down to. And one of the things that I might add, and another official told this to me, and it makes a lot of sense. Skip Bayless, you know who the real culprits are with all of this stuff going on as it pertains to these reports and how the public goes off about it because mistakes are made, et cetera, et cetera? You know who's to blame? Us, the media. Here's why. Because when guys make mistakes, when you miss a call, the offensive foul on Deion Waiters, when you miss the call on James Harden, or you know, or something goes on with KD or somebody else, it's plastered all over ESPN.com and beyond. But when the right calls are made, and you're saying that the referee made the right call, you can't find those stories nearly as much. And so when you see the negative stories highlighted and elevated and illuminated so profoundly. But then when the referees are actually credited with making the right call and the stories ultimately get squashed and it doesn't disseminate with, with the level of cachet and significance that you would, like, that you would like it to have, then what gets lost in the shuffle is the fact that the NBA is consistent in what they're putting out there. It's just that we're not consistent in what we choose to highlight and elevate and what we choose to squash. If, and so when the NBA, when an NBA official made that point to me, I kind of got that. I kind of got that. But if I may defend myself on this, I think far more times on this show I have defended NBA refs as opposed to No, I'm criticized. not talking about us. Yeah, I'm talking okay. about the institution. Okay. I'm not talking about the show. I'm talking about the media. Okay. In other words, we have, we, have to, we have to highlight when they, when they put out there that the right calls were made, we need to illuminate that just as much as we illuminate when they say the wrong calls were made. We okay. got to do that. Right. If, uh, uh, if, if that's not the case, then we're going to constantly find ourselves lamenting one play here or okay. one play there or whatever the case may be. All They're right. being consistent. We are not. Okay, bottom line. Would you have called a two-shot foul on Ibaka, on LaMarcus with a second and a half left under the basket? Jersey pull. I probably would not have called that, but I definitely would have called an offensive foul on Deion Waiters, and I definitely would have called – I definitely uh, would, have, would have called – I'm saying I definitely would have called the offensive foul on Deion Waiters. I definitely would not have called the play on Harden because superstar offensive players get those calls a lot of times where you're driving you step back you might push off a little bit to get your shot off those kind of plays particularly for the home team with the star having the ball in his hands those are usually calls that they make that's all i'm saying wait wait you're saying you would not have called the push off that harden got away with Right. That's right. Three? I would. I would have been. I. I think. Game I three? think I would have been caught up in. I. I can. Un I'm saying throughout I, NBA history, I've seen superstar offensive players not get those calls against them. Okay, but I thought you said that day you would have called it. I know I would have called. You know, that was just no. so blatant. I'm. I'm calling that no, no, no. like that. I. I said it was an offensive foul. But I also said I understand okay. why an official didn't make that call because historically officials never make those calls in that kind of situation.
where a shot is taking place and okay. the ball is in your hands. Deion Waiters on the sideline trying to inbounds the ball, it's entirely different. All right, we'll leave it there. Game three, Friday, 9.30 Eastern on ESPN. Coming up next, Skip, can you read this line? The Cowboys offense. Expected to be, what do you mean expected to be? Who wrote this? Who wrote expected? Who wrote this?